Hey everyone, my name is Lawrence and welcome to this Imaginer 3D Blender tutorial. Today we'll be going over the step-by-step -step process involved in creating this simple texture map switch, which will allow you to change between multiple texture sets with the simple flip of that switch. You can find the full written version of this tutorial using the link in the description of this video. This tutorial was inspired by a recent tweet I read, which posed the question of how to switch between three different texture sets, such as clean, light dirt, and heavy dirt, on a single object within one material without having to manually go into the shade editor or even have that object selected at all. For this process, I'll be using Blender version 3.0, and I'll be using this sci-fi drone model I created a little while back. As you can see, I have one material applied on this object called Drone Texture Sets. And within that material, I have three texture sets. I just group them with Control G just so that they're kind of easier to look at for the purpose of this tutorial. Each of these texture sets has a different color variation. The first being black, second being blue, and the third being white. My goal is to be able to switch between these three texture sets without having to enter the shader editor each time and without having to have the object selected at all. We're gonna achieve the results shown earlier by using what are known as custom properties, and I'll explain that as we go. But to start, we'll add a mix shader into our shader editor by pressing Shift A, search, mix shader. We're gonna place this mix shader in between our first texture set and the material output. Let's just set this to zero first. And we'll select our next texture set, blue, and we'll plug it into the bottom of our mix shader node. Now, if I switch from a factor of zero to one on this slider, you'll see the color changes from black to blue, with black being represented by a value of zero and blue being represented by a value of one. Set that back to zero, and we're gonna duplicate this mix shader. So press Shift D and place that in between the first mix shader and the material output. Next, we'll connect our third and final texture set to the bottom of our new mix shader node. Now, if we switch from the value of zero to one, we go from black to white. Let's set that back to zero, and that's all the nodes we're gonna need for these three texture sets. For these next steps, we'll be using a great Blender feature known as Custom Properties. You may think of Custom Properties as a way to add and store data within Blender. Each object or bone, for example, holds data, and Custom Properties allows us to use or access this data to drive other properties within Blender. Custom properties are frequently used when developing animation-ready rigs and for other less common uses, such as what I'm showing you today. So if you look over to my right, you'll see that we have our properties panel. Within our properties panel, we have different types of properties. And right now we're in the material properties panel. This will allow us to change all of our materials and even allow us to add custom properties to this material but this is not where we're going to add them. We're going to go over to this little globe icon here, the world properties in our world data tab, and we're going to add the custom property here by clicking this drop down. Now the reason we want to add it here is we want to be able to access this custom property no matter where we are in our scene and regardless of what object or objects may be selected at the time. We'll start by pressing new and we've been presented with a new slider. Within this slider we're going to click the gear icon, which will bring up our edit property panel. We're going to change the type from float to integer as we want to change from one number to another. In this case, zero to one. We want it to be binary because we don't want any transition phase in between. So we're going to go and change the property name to drone colon black to blue. As our first switch is going to change the color set from black to blue. We're going to change the default value from 1 to 0 as we want to start at black and then go to blue. We're going to keep our minimum at 0 and our max at 1. We're going to keep it at one step because you want it to just go one number at a time. We're going to leave everything else okay. You can add a description if you want that'll just bring up a little tooltip like what you see on my screen now. And they're useful for larger scenes, but for now it's not necessary. And press OK. Let's set this back to 0. And we're going to right click in the space of this custom property slider and we're going to say copy as new driver. 
We're going to go back over to our shader editor and on the first mix shader node in the factor slider, we're going to right click and say paste driver. What we've just done is we've taken the information, the data that we put into our custom property and we're using it to drive the factor of our mix shader node. So when I switch from zero to one on my custom property switch, you can see it now changes from one texture set to another without a transition in between. If I wanted a transition, I would change this from integer to float, which will bring back that slider value and allow us to kind of have a smoother change. Now we're gonna do the same thing with our second mix shader node. So go back over to your world data tab, press new, edit property, float to integer, property name, we're gonna name this drone colon black to white, change the default value to zero, keep the minimum zero, max at one, step one, no description, press okay. Now set this back to zero, right click, copy as new driver, go back over to your shader editor in the factor slider, right click, paste driver. Now our second switch controls the texture set to go from black to white. And that's basically it. This technique has an incredible number of uses and can prove helpful, especially when dealing with large complex scenes and animations. I hope this was an educational and helpful tutorial. If you have any questions or any suggestions for future tutorials as I continue to grow my channel, feel free to leave a comment or even contact me on Twitter at Imaginerd3D. Please remember to like and subscribe. Till next time, keep creating your beautiful art and have a wonderful day.